Valencia Cardoso from Social Conscious Arabia, and I'm here with Anna and Chris from Bon Education. Hey, Anna. Hey, Chris. How are you guys doing? Good. Great to be here. Very, very good to be here. Well, Thanks for having nice. us. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's uh, let's start off by talking a little bit about Bon Education. So what is it that you guys do? Um, at Bon Education, we're education technology consultants. So we spend about. of our time working in schools across the Middle East, Mm -hmm. uh, developing teacher and principal workshops and training programs on how to effectively integrate technology into teaching and learning. And then with the other percentage of our time, uh, we develop a lot of cool products uh, for our our own company and for other companies uh, that help kids learn uh, and teachers learn through technology. Cool. Um, Yeah, and I would just add to that, um, we also do a lot of uh, organizing within the education mm-hmm. community of uh, special events that bring uh, educators and people who are interested in education together to, uh, to talk about ideas, to collaborate, brainstorm on uh, problems that, uh, that, that they're experiencing. Um, and so that could be seminars or workshops or meetups. So that's kind of another piece to the puzzle. And, and uh, going back to the start, what really inspired you guys to create Bon Education? That's a good question. Yeah. We'll take that. Um, I think we always wanted to create an education company at some point. Um, but when we got here about three and a half years ago, one of the things that we noticed is that governments across the region are increasingly spending uh, education dollars on fitting out schools with internet, Wi-Fi, and computers. Um, but we didn't see as much emphasis being placed on Um, professional development programs to make sure that uh, teachers know how to use these tools with Mm -hmm. kids. Um, So that was how we got started. Uh, We put in a proposal actually to the UAE Ministry of Education to develop a teacher training program for how to use uh, ICT effectively in schools. And uh, we got that contract and that was sort of the beginning of a a journey. And that's how it all started? Yeah. Mm, Yeah, the rest is history. So... (laughs) Cool. Um, and uh, who are some of the organizations that you've worked with? What are some of the types of projects that you've done? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, in addition to working with the Ministry of Education, um, we work with both for-profit and non-profit uh, organizations. So on the non-profit side, we work with foundations. We work with uh, ministries of education. We work with, um, with NGOs. And we help them with a variety of things, ranging from um, program development, to uh, leading workshops, um, to helping them with uh, online strategies and and product development. And we do similar stuff on the side with for-profits. So for example, we work with a lot of large technology companies, helping them implement their education programs. Um, And that also tends to be program development, um, product development, research, and consulting around how to effectively integrate technology into education. Yeah, so we've done a lot of work with um Microsoft, um, Sheikh Saud's Foundation and Russell Haima, a number of publishers in the States, things like that. Really cool. Um, and here's a big question. Um, why is it so important? Well, why is the integration of technology and uh, education so important, especially in emerging markets like the Middle East? Sure. That is a good question. Yeah. Um, Do you want to take it first? Yeah, I'll take yeah. it first. I think one of the number one reasons to integrate uh, technology into education here is uh, it increases student motivation. Mm -hmm. Kids are very excited about using technology, but uh, two, um, if you look at a number of the reports that have been put out on education and uh, labor in the region, there's a huge need for workforce preparedness programs. And when you look at sort of the skill gap that a number of employers state Um, fresh graduates need um, it's digital literacy skills Um, you know how how to come up with a question how to uh, find that information on the internet evaluate synthesize and then actually produce content that can be distributed digitally Uh, and you know to do um, collaborative work projects with people in other countries these are skills that uh, kids young adults older adults need to know and um, it's important that these get addressed before people go to the workforce in the schools. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and if I were to add anything to that, it would, it would just be, uh, sort of describe it as empowerment. So we see the use of technology 
and uh, in education as a means of empowering learners to take more responsibility, more control for their own education, and uh, and to make it more self-directed. And so we see a major a major trend in the future being the educator becoming more of a guide, uh, more of a coach to the students, and and through technology they're able to um, access the resources they need, uh, you know, learn the things they need to in order to um, achieve their goals. And so it's about empowerment. Really cool. And speaking of the future, um, how do you see um, technology having an impact on education um, within the region? A number of ways. Uh, beyond uh, workforce preparedness, um, I think two things come to sort of the top of my mind. Uh, one is technology allows a lot more people to access education and education materials than ever before at a much reduced price. So for example, in remote regions where it's hard to uh, recruit qualified teachers or subject-specific uh, teachers, you can use online courses and online social networks for education to provide um, instruction to kids that would otherwise not receive instruction. So for example, if a child in a remote region of the desert wants to study Mandarin or wants to study uh, civil engineering and there aren't teachers in those subjects around, they can use materials online to access those subjects. I think another uh, important development in technology recently has been the development of applications for children with special needs. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of schools here really struggle to um, provide services for special needs children. And so um, by using applications um, either between adults and children or teachers and children, um, schools can more affordably provide support to children with autism or or reading challenges um, that they otherwise wouldn't be able to provide. Yeah, and I think an, another dimension to this is is the way students engage with the material that, that they're studying. Mm -hmm. And a big problem, I think, is that school is boring. And it's not just a problem in the Middle East. Oh, it's uh, everywhere. <laughs> it's a problem everywhere. Um, and I think that uh, the integration of technology and in, into education has has the ability to um, spice things up, uh, and so I think that using uh, using technology and, and creating interactive content, interactive uh, books, um, social using social networking where students can um, can collaborate across different geographies uh, has the, the power to motivate and engage students. Uh, in ways that haven't happened before, and I see that as having a really big impact in 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 the Middle East, in the Gulf, um, uh, where there are problems with student engagement and student motivation, and student retention, and student retention. Yeah, dropout rates. You know, you, you can tackle those problems um, by creating a, by creating content that speaks to where students are coming from. Mm -hmm. um, students these days are immersed in a digital environment outside of school using cell phones, iPads, you know, tablets and laptops. Yeah. And so bringing that into the school, um, we see it having a, a big impact on engagement. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, I just love, we get so many letters from the teachers that we've worked with or emails uh, that talk about how students are just so much more motivated after they uh, change their teaching styles. So moving from more rote and memory-based instruction to more project-based and digital instruction. Um, kids respond immediately, and typically that response is uh, increased engagement. Uh, they like showing their projects and ideas to peers, and that's um, really great to see. And on that note, I'd like to thank you both for like joining me on this, and um, you guys are certainly the ed tech uh, leaders, thought leaders in the region, and um, for everyone else out there, check out Vaughn Education. Thank you, Anna and Chris. All right, thank you. Thanks, Valencia.